we are live, 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 live. Okay, folks, my name is Laura Maylindo. I am the member of Provincial Parliament for Kitchener Center, and I have started to do this very super cool thing. Um, it is called People in My Hood, and it is a philosophical podcast. And I, I've started to do it. It started last week. And um, I really, really love it because I get an opportunity to talk about the people that I've met over the course of the time that I have been a member of provincial parliament. But this Friday, today, is a little bit different because this Friday, I'm going to focus on a program that my office runs called Leading Women, Leading Girls. And it is an award ceremony and it is super hyped. And I'm going to introduce you to a whole bunch of powerful, courageous, brilliant, brilliant, awesome sauce women in my neighborhood that I want you to learn from, listen to, um, and, and I'll get a chance to talk with them. Um, Alicia Brilla is here with me uh, as well, but we're going to, yay, Alicia. Um, I'm going to actually start the programming in just a moment because we cannot do anything without starting in a very positive, positive way. So um, the first, first thing that I need to say is this. I am hosting this fabulous podcast slash celebration slash award ceremony on land that has been held down, cared for, loved, and stewarded by the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the neutral people. Um, I am hosting this in uh, my home uh, in Kitchener. And I have been taught that my land acknowledgement, like finding out what land you're on is the easy part. You can, there's an app for that. So that is easy peasy. The real work is making a real connection between the reality of hosting a conversation on stolen land and the topic of conversation that you are about to have. Um, and the topic of conversation that I am about to have is about brilliant, brilliant, brilliant women. Um, strong, courageous women who, uh, in the work that I have done, um, working with and supporting Indigenous community members, not just in Kitchener Centre, but in my past life as well, um, it's often women at the helm, women that are leaders, women that are holding the stories and fighting the fights and on the front lines and putting themselves and their spirit and everything that they know on the line for the rest of their communities. Wow, that's going to make me cry. Um, the power of women uh, is something that I don't think that we speak about enough. And, and right now, when we're trying to navigate sort of the end of this pandemic, what we do know from all of the research is that it is primarily women that have been pushed out of the uh, workforce, that have been forced to rethink career paths, to be home with, with their families, to do the work, um, to keep the economy going in all sorts of different ways. And yet it is the services that are there to support women that have not been funded, that remain underfunded. The services that would allow us to thrive when we face abuse or harm um, that don't really seem to be as meaningful to folks um, when, when we look at things like the, the way our legal system and criminal justice system operates. The fact that um, a lot of talk is going into finding missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and a lot of action seems to be lacking. And so with that as a starting point, I want us to engage in this celebration because we've got some powerful people amongst us, but I do not want us to do that with this idea that this celebration means the work is done. The work is not done. And I think it's really, really important for us to call as many people in to keep doing this important work as we possibly can. <sighs> Breathe. Um, so it's time to celebrate, celebrate good times. Come on. Woo! It's a celebration. So in order to have a celebration, you need music. And while we are not here together, all of us in person, I was able to call on one of my very, 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 very good friends um, in community, in my hood, Alicia Brilla. And so I'm going to ask Alicia to open up our celebration with some uh, music. Okay, Alicia, over to you. Thank you, Laura May. It's so nice to be here with all of you. I'm, I'm 
thrilled to learn more about all of the change makers in Kitchener Center. And of course, honored to be asked to play by Laura May Lindo, the legendary, the equally as musical. Uh, love it. And we will be jamming together one day, but for now, the dancing will be our jam. It'll be a virtual jam. I like it. Jam. So I'm going to play a, a song here that I actually think Laura May did sing with me at my album release party. So this song is called Turning of the Tide, and it's all about change making, and uh, it's dedicated to all of you today. the power to change we have the power to move things we have the power to change it all well, we are creators of life we are a new generation we're building bridges and breaking walls oh the mighty moon is showing a new face and the youth are so electrified. Chandra, Chandra, ooh, well, the water is moving. Hey, this is the turning of a tide. Oh, 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 this is the turning of a tide. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the turning of a tide. Oh, 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 oh. This is the turning of a tide. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the turning of a tide. Well, we have the power to change. We have the power to say no. We have the power to change the world. I know that we can give love back to the earth and we can reach for higher connections. We can heal ourselves and each other. Oh, oh, oh the mighty moon is showing a new face. Hey, oh, the youth are so electrified. Chandra, Chandra, ooh, well, the water is moving. This is the turning of a tide. Oh, 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 oh. This is the turning of a tide. Hey, 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 hey. This is the turning of a tide. Oh, 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 oh. This is the turning of a tide. Hey, 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 hey. This is the turning of a tide. Oh, oh, oh the mighty moon showing a new face and all of you are so beautiful and hype and chandra chandra oh well the water is moving said this is the turning of a tide oh whoa and you are a turning of the tide hey laura may you are the turning of the tide. <laughs> Yay, Alicia! Ah! When Alicia Brilla puts your name in a song, you know that you have reached high places. <laughs> Likewise, when you're invited to sing at something Laura may organize, then you know you're in high places. <laughs> Oh, I love it. It was so, so beautiful. Alicia, thank you thank so, so you. much. Um, Zara, I'm going to ask you to do, we're going to move into our little ceremony here for the 2020 winners. So before I start to bring them up, Alicia, you hold on. Things are going to happen. Um, I wanted to just let folks know this. In 2020, I put out my first call for Leading Women, Leading Girls. I was super excited. We organized everything. It was going to be in person. And I think the date was March 23rd. And on March 23rd, everything shut down because of the pandemic. We had to cancel the celebration. Nobody knew what was going on. It was literally, in my professional opinion, a hot mess. And so what we decided to do in 2021 
was to start off the celebration by recognizing the 2020 winners. Um, now, not all of the 2020 winners could make it, but there are two amazing winners that were able to join us today. And so I'm going to start off by asking Rochelle to, sh to join me. Hold on one sec. I'm going to get you up here. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to start pressing buttons. Zara's in the back end going, what's happening? Oh no, wrong one, wrong Rochelle, wrong Rochelle. Hold on, Rochelle Lee, one sec. We're getting the other one, hold on. Aha, here we are. Okay, this is what live broadcasting is all about. You go with it. You look beautiful and fantastic and it is so lovely to see you. How are you doing? I am so well and I am so happy to see you. It's been too long. Virtual <laughs> hug, virtual hug. <laughs> Okay, folks, so here is the deal. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of the bio that I have, and then I'm just going to talk very quickly, and then I'm going to ask you this question. So Rochelle is actually a recipient of the Friends of Kitchener Center Leading Women, Leading Girls Award, and here's why. Um, Rochelle is one of nine citizenship judges in Canada, a paralegal professor at Mohawk College, adjunct faculty at Queen's Law School, and a co-author of the textbook Tribunal Practice and Procedure for Legal Professionals. Judge Ivory is assigned to the Greater Ontario area, which includes Kitchener, and enjoys the, uh, the many ceremonies and outreach activities that promote active citizenship. And you're also a member of the Niagara Region Women's Advisory Committee, which I wanted to point out only because of the nature of this award. Before I ask you the question, though, Rochelle, I just need to tell everybody something. Um, as a new member of Provincial Parliament, everything that I'm doing is like brand new, right? I've never done any of the things that I'm doing. And so I was invited to be at a citizenship ceremony um, in Kitchener. I didn't even know that there was a court in Kitchener up the street from my office. That is how new I was to the entire situation. So I show up and there is Rochelle. And it was, first off, it was just brilliant. Cause let me just real talk. Black women meeting black women makes people very happy, like the black women. So it was like a, Wah! that was our start, right? And then I was like, no, really, I am the member of provincial parliament. I am a professional. And then you brought me into the room and you had the most beautiful and moving citizenship ceremony I had ever witnessed. Like it was, it was so meaningful and impactful. And you spent time talking about the lands that we were on. Um, you spent time, which a lot of people don't realize that newcomers are often, you know, not brought into that. Exactly. Um, it was beautiful. And so then when I had this opportunity and we had an opportunity to actually say, thank you for everything that you do for Kitchener and for all of us, um, I was super hyped. And then when you said you could be here this time, I was even more hyped. And so now the question, the question, question, the question of the day. <laughs> In the work that you do, why is female leadership so, so, so important? Well, women have been and continue to be on the front lines of everything that makes our nation strong. Women continue to push boundaries and to break down walls and are totally fearless in the things that we do in order to push uh, change and fundamental and meaningful change within this country. And I know that my presence as one of nine citizenship judges in Canada, the only black citizenship, citizenship judge currently, uh, a woman with locks, a mom of four, um, that all of that inspires those to see what is possible. Uh, and so that is so fundamentally important. And the work that I do to amplify the voices of the unheard and to continue and facilitate uh, difficult and meaningful conversations that um, you know drive change um, is fundamental to making communities better and stronger and more inclusive and it's just so fundamentally important that we continue to do that work. And I know that my presence there inspires so many to then activate whatever is within them. And so, as I said, women are fearless. We are fundamental to moving the tides of our country and making meaningful change within this world. And if it weren't for women, I truly don't know where we would be. Uh, 
I really don't. Um, it's really just that that simple. Um, I have the blessing of, um, you know, I, actually the majority of the judges are actually women. Um, and it's the first time. <laughs> and I, you know, I think that that also uh, impacts the feeling of welcoming that newcomers feel, that new citizens feel. I have the ability to shape what it means to be a Canadian and then have that be the narrative that informs what people do moving forward. And it's yeah. just, I'm so thankful and so powerful, so feel so empowered to be able to do that. Oh my goodness. Rochelle, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being present. Thank you for your words. Thank you for using your sphere of influence um, to do so much good in the world. You are such a deserving uh, recipient of our Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. Mwah! Thank you. you. And thank you for everything that you do. I know, right, Mama, you're, you're mm -hmm. working hard. I know fundamentally, like within my heart and my soul, what you pour into this world. And I'm just so thankful for you. So thank you oh. for this recognition. Yes, yay! Everybody, the recognitions are real and they will come to you. I swear they are gonna get mailed because we couldn't be in person, but they are coming. Rochelle, big, huge hugs to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, take care. Um, take care. Okay, now we have another of our 2020 recipients who was also with us and Jadam. Jadam is somewhere in here. Jadam is gonna be joining me any minute. Aha, Jadam! How are you, Jadam? How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Oh my goodness, I'm so, so happy to have you. Okay, we're doing the same thing. Here's the deal. Um, folks, Jadam is one of the 2020 recipients of the Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. And here is a little bit about Jadam. Jadam supports the participation of women and girls from diverse cultural communities in social, in economic, or in community life act, um, acting as a positive role model by mentoring, by guiding, by coaching by providing opportunities for self-improvement, advocating for social and environmental justice, it, which includes but is not limited to anti-racism, diversity, income inequality, LGBTQ2S uh, plus identities, healthy relationships, anti-oppression, land and water protection, by breaking down barriers and encouraging women and girls to get involved in these non-traditional career paths. Jadam is a stellar, stellar, stellar representation of women leading girls in our community. Jadam, 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 thank you so much for being here with me, honestly. Um, I am, I'm gonna ask you the same question, but first I have to say this, literally everywhere I go, I look around and there is Jada. When it comes to, honestly, when it comes to the kinds of rabble rousing that I enjoy the most in community, the stuff that's about building community, making sure people are safe, standing up to systems, demanding better for people in the world, I turn around and there is Jadam. So to have an opportunity to have you um, here with us virtually because we were not able to do the face-to-face -face is truly an honor and a blessing to me. So thank you for making the time. Um, I am asking you the same question. In the work that you do, what does female leadership mean to you? Yes. So I just want to say, Nyawagoa, I'm really grateful to be here today um, and, you know, to be a part of this, even if it is virtual. It was funny because I remember when everything went down. And so I'm just excited to be able to be uh, participating as well still, um, given that it was 2020. But, um, you know, um, women in leadership is important to me because, um, you know, for the ability for young uh, and and grown women and girls um, to see the see people represented and women represented in leadership, um, you know, a big part too is recognizing just kind of showing that it's possible, right? Um, because being I'm also a sole support parent um, as well. I was not a great academic achiever in in high school and everything, and so you know, just to be able to show 
women and girls that whatever you set your mind to is possible um, and that you can do anything. I think that that's a big part of it for me, right? And um, I'm currently uh, the interim director of the Waterloo Indigenous Student Centre. And so a big part of the work that I'm trying to focus on right now is in the uh, world of the academy at the university, right? And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, it's really important that we're continuing to break down the barriers for Indigenous, um, Black and people of colour, as well as women and girls, um, so that um, there is a place. So this is why leadership with women is important for me. Um, and I'm just super grateful to be here today. Um, thank you so much, Laura Mae and Lindo for recognizing me and yeah. Oh my goodness, Jadam. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your words and for your answer. And please know that we see you and that the work that you're doing is meaningful. The amount of people that, um, when I first started before I was elected and I was at uh, Laurier, I was the director of diversity and equity there. Um, the amount of young women and young women of color that would just come to the office to see if I was real. Like just, they literally were wondering if it was a rumor based in truth or a rumor that was like, nah, she's not really black. But I was, I was, as I like to say, blickety black and I was sitting in the office and I would sit down with them and I would have conversations about what it is like to navigate these systems that aren't necessarily made for us. And so the work is hard. There's a lot that you're shouldering. There's a lot that that comes on the shoulders of women that are in these leadership positions. So thank you, thank you. Um, I'm happy that I could give a small little bit of joy by by um, honoring you with one of these leading women, leading girls. Yes, yes, yes. Thank yes. you so much. Yes. It's definitely a highlight, a definitely a huge highlight in these uh, times where we've been isolated and not necessarily connected in the same ways in community. So uh -huh. I am super grateful. And yes, virtual hug and look forward to seeing you. I miss all the events and, you know, being in person, but I'm grateful that you were able to make something happen like this today. So yeah, Nyawa. Oh, my friends, I am so super hyped. Okay, listen, there were three other people that were recipients of the 2020 award. So I'm just going to take half a second and read um, a little bit, tell you a little bit about them. So one of the other 2020 recipients that was not able to make it um, is Jane Klugman. Now, Jane makes her home in Kitchener with her husband, Ian. She has been on the board of a number of important community organizations, including the Humane Society of KW in Strat uh, Stratford, Perth, the Greater Kitchener Waterloo Chamber of Commerce, the chair of the Physicians Recruitment Task Force, vice chair of the International Women's Forum, executive member and founding chapter member, KW Oktoberfest, um, past board member and board chair of the uh, Chesley Lake Corporation and the Institute for Corporate Directors, um, SWO chapter, executive and founding chapter member. Um, and the most important thing for me with Jane is that whenever I meet Jane, I am in conversation with somebody who is so loving and so caring and so thoughtful. She listens to what it is that is happening, um, whatever your experiences that you have presented to her, and she provides you with as much support and care and compassion as she possibly can. And so Jane, um, from my office to you, thank you for everything that you do in community. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being such a strong leader for us and for young women that are growing up in Kitchener, Waterloo, and being beyond. Um, the other two winners are Alana Arthur and Dana Pike from 2020. Um, just very, very briefly, Alana is um, a woman in community that I met uh, when she opened up a fitness studio um, in, in the riding. It was a brand new studio um, and it happened right before the pandemic hit hard. But Alana is brilliant and innovative and creative and so, so, so deserving of this amazing award. So I am going to be sending that over, sending Alana lots in love and care um, during these challenging times to be doing anything involving business and fitness at this moment is not an easy thing to do. Um, but you got this. And if you need anything, you know where to find me. Um, and also Dana Pike. Um, Dana is actually somebody that I met in the neighborhood um, advocating for uh, her child who is on the autism spectrum. Dana would not quit. Dana would make sure that the, uh, the story of her son was with us 
um, made sure that the fight for the supports that folks need that are on the spectrum are being delivered, not just for her and her family, but also for other people that are in need of um, proper funding and proper supports uh, for those that are on the spectrum. And so I, I just wanted to give another shout out to Dana for um, being one of the recipients from last year and for the ongoing advocacy. I don't think that people realize the kind of advocacy that parents and oftentimes mommies um, are doing in community to make sure that their kids are safe and secure and cared for. And many times that advocacy is not just for them and for their families. It's for other people who are in very similar situations. And so thank you for doing that work and thank you for fighting um, and thank you for coming to my office and allowing me to be part of uh, that journey, even in the small ways that I was able to be. So with that, I think Sarah is going to just do a very quick presentation of the awards. We need a song for this. Do, 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 do. That's your song right now. And if I was really, really on top of things, I would have one of those fake little horns that I give to my child it's actually just you know a paper to uh paper roll you know yeah paper towel roll and you just make it into a trumpet anyway here we go I am super hyped thank you thank you thank you to all of the 2020 leading women leading girls winners and now my friends we move into 2021 2021 brings us a whole set of new winners and I am going to start off by calling chemical Kimiko, join me upon the virtual stage. Hi there. Yay! Kim Whoa, Kimiko, you fancy. I don't look so fancy. You have the mic. Look at that. I need That's to go the to Kimiko. fancy Kimiko's mic, the green room. screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and I'm just sitting in my living room and catching up. But it's okay. I am so, 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 so pleased to be able to have you here. I am going to read what's on here, but it's like, I just want to talk to you. Okay, so first professional. Um, Kimiko, educator in both childcare and elementary classroom settings. She is currently an MLL resource teacher for the Waterloo Region District School Board and is connected to a number of community organizations which serve children and youth in the community. She is married to an IT professional and is the mother of an amazing seven-year-old child. Oh, super amazing. I like follow you on all the socials and yes, <laughs> super amazing. Uh, Kimiko is a force to be reckoned with in community, always centering and advocating for the most marginalized and the most vulner vulnerable among us. Kimiko, you are so, so, so deserving of this Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. Um, before I ask you the question, I also just wanted to say a little ditty about you because I can't help but say little ditties about people. Um, but and poor Zara is in the back end going, stop with the ditties. Stop with the ditties. But I, I love them. I love the ditties. Um, every time I have to do any kind of advocacy and such, and I start to feel a little bit down because sometimes it's hard, right? Especially when it comes to advocacy for change within our education system. I can go to your, your feed. You are so helpful. And every resource that you have, you just share. Like every, every bit of knowledge that you have, it's not about you and you personally growing or whatever. It's about you making sure that you use your sphere of influence to support the people around you. And I cannot tell you how meaningful and um, important that is and how much, uh, how much I want to give you a big old hug, especially when everything shut down and people were like, how, how are we going to teach online? And you were just like, here, Here's a whole bunch of resources. I have them all with my fancy microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so Kim, so the question for you, in the work that you do, what does female leadership mean to you? Well, of course, as you mentioned, sharing is caring. And that is a motto. I know it's so cheesy, but it is truly, I, I do live by that. And I do believe that woman-led leadership is all about sharing and helping each other out, being the village for each other. And I do believe... You know, women-led leadership is all about servant leadership. It's about leading from that place of love, not that place of fear. It's about recognizing that intersectionality of our various identities. It's about centering the needs of our most vulnerable and really listening to those we serve. I believe truly from the bottom of my heart, women are change makers. And I'm really, really proud to serve and inspire the next generation of leaders as a parent, an educator, and as an advocate as well. Oh, Kimiko, 
I'm giving you a virtual hug. Can I also just say that if ever I need anything, I can literally call on chemical. It's hard to find those people, right, in the world. But I yeah. can like just call you and be like, want to be on a live stream? <laughs> and you're just like, yup. Which I love. I love it. I love it. So thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do. You know where to find me if you need anything. Um, I hope that you get a chance to like totally celebrate your award. I swear it is coming in the mail. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate this. Bye, Kimiko. Oh, my goodness. It just keeps getting better and better. Like, we've got some solid women leading girls in the community. So I'm asking Gita to come and join me. Gita. Okay. Yay! Gita, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? I am so, 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 so clearly losing my mind with all yeah. the goodness and happiness and positivity. Okay, hold on. I'm going to read about you. Okay. Um, Gita has worked tirelessly for the advancement of women and especially young ladies in and developing girls. Through her work in theater instruction, she has guided many young women by helping them to establish their place in the world and bloom from there. At her theater company, Growing in the Arts, she has developed an exceptional focus on young girls' strength and confidence. Her specific group, Gita's Girls, was created as a safe and nurturing space for those young people to blossom and to grow. Gita, you are one of our 2021 recipients of the Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. Thank you very much. Um, I am, I swear, I'm going to ask you the same question, but I, oh, the ditties, man, the ditties. So here's yeah. the ditty. Um, the amount of people that reached out to my office when things got really tough in 2021 from the arts community, from the, from theater, from music, et cetera, et cetera, um, was it was disheartening to a certain degree because I knew how much we needed the resources to help them um, because of the kind of work that they do in community. Um, theater is this space that allows us to really tell our stories and become who we need to be. And for anybody who does not know about the importance of theater in community, I am here to tell you that the space of mentorship that happens there, um, especially when you can look to female leaders in that space that are using that medium to tell their stories on their terms, in their ways, however they need to, um, is so absolutely brilliant. And so Gita, thank you so, so much for everything that you're bringing to the community and that you continue to bring to the community. My question to you, in the work that you do, why is female leadership so, so, so important? I think female leadership, in, in Canada is so important. Um, <laughs> it goes from government to all the way through. Um, so I, I feel you said something earlier, you said that yes, we have stories to tell. And I think in theater, um, specific, specifically um, in youth theater, I noticed in our community is very competitive. Um, and I was noticing that a lot of the girls that I was that I was working with were really um, really down on themselves. Really had there was a lot of self esteem stuff going on, and I think there was a lot of pressure to follow through on the storytelling of of the expected trope. So we're either you know the princess and we're perfect, um, and we're the leading lady. Or the evil, evil, you know, the the witch, you know. So we we're kind of there was sort of like black and white, and there were no shades in between. And so I felt that it was really important to create a, a program for for girls specifically, a safe, brave space that they could come and tell their stories and control the narrative of the reality of being a girl and growing up girl. Um, and so I wanted to to create that that environment, and I always. I've always sort of lived by lead by example. I'm born and raised in Kitchener. I started the business. You know, I had dreams of being a movie star and I ended up doing what I'm doing and it was my passion. And I, you know, live very close to my studio. I come every week to class and I teach and I've gone through some hardships. Yes, in the last 20 months, it has not been easy. And I'm wanting to, uh, I'm leading by example, I feel, you know, by holding on as tight as I can and, and, and keep going. It's really important. And I want to show young girls that um, you can make it through anything. Um, and you do have a story to tell. And it's a beautiful story. 
And um, I think that that's, for me, that's what leadership is about. And that's just leading by example. Yeah. Oh, Gita, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Because what you're doing it by leading, it's not just that you're leading by example in theory, but by creating that community of care around young women in community, you are providing them with that space. Um, and I, what I do know from having two artsy uh, little people, my little one is like, he does all the things. Who knows what he's going to become? But the other two, super, super duper artsy. And they quite liked theater. Um, I think because they could navigate some of those difficult feels, like as young people, they could navigate it safely. There was a distance because it's a play or because it's somebody else's story and then they can start to like grow in a different way. But they can't do that safely without leaders like you in community holding them and, and holding that space for them. So thank you, Gita, for everything that you're doing. Congratulations. Virtual hug to you. That's a virtual hug. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you okay oh my gosh it just keeps getting better i'm so super hyped um i'm asking cheryl cheryl it is your turn to join me on a virtual stage hello cheryl hello, May. how are you doing fantastic you, you, you know what's something that's very interesting both you and i have the same name my middle name is may as well oh my gosh cheryl may laura may Oh my gosh. Right? Small world. You heard it here first. Ta da. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cheryl, let me read a little bit about you. Cheryl, founding co chair of the Women in Communications and Technology Waterloo Region chapter, and is proud and excited to bring free of charge, my friends, Mentor Circle program to our community. This is the third year for the Mentor Circle program, and for 2021-2022, over 90 local women and women-identifying individuals are provided with a much-needed, much, much-needed, uh, strong, positive female role models and active support of male allies and makes women's work and life experiences more visible to future generations so that they can also understand equity, diversity, and inclusion, um, and know that it's more than words. Encourage them to participate in the building of these inclusive societies. What? <laughs> what, what, what? When I was reading the, um, the forms, when they got sent in to me, I was like, what is this? I love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. So listen, um, you are a recipient of the 2021 Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. Do, 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 Thank you so much. Um, and my ditty for you, always a ditty. Um, I cannot tell you how important it is, especially in our community, in, in Kitchener Centre, but also across Waterloo Region. When we've got things like the tech hubs that um, I know that there's a lot of push to try and ensure that we have women ready to get into those professions. But when you're doing the mentorship, you get to actually work with people to remind them about how brilliant they actually are, right? Because sometimes it's that inner voice that's saying to us, oh no, we can't do this, or we can't start that, or we can't do this. So at this point in the pandemic, where there's gonna be a lot of rebuilding happening, a lot of women that are gonna be seeking this kind of support, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for the kind of work that you're doing in community. And so my question to you, yeah. my question to you, in the work that you do, why is female leadership so very important? Yeah. So, you know what? First of all, thank you very much for the award and for recognizing my my colleagues and my the team that comes together to put um, the mentor circles on. So it's it's a lot of heavy lifting, but man, it's done with with love and with pride. So thank you very much for uh, for being part of this with us. The big piece of of women and, and women in leadership is creating opportunities for really honest discussions and engaging in practical and tactical growth opportunities. So the, one of the big foundations and cores of what we believe in is that it's helping those ahead of you. So sometimes helping people who are already in leadership roles understand that they're in a leadership role and that the roles and responsibilities that come with it and the, and the honor that they have of being in that role, helping those beside you to say, you know what, we're in this together. We can, we can keep moving forward. And, you know, lending the hand to those who are coming up behind you. So without having the, you know, to be able to see it, to be it, um, it's very difficult for, for anybody to kind of navigate what's that career path look like. Uh, and regardless of what career you're in, 
you're still moving through a path and how do you get through that path um, without support from each other. Um, so we really look at, um, you know, being able to learn from each other uh, and being able to support. And when we, we started this, we went, did about a six month scan of our community because there's so many fantastic programs that are out there supporting women, women supporting women. Um, and, you know, and we really wanted to see where was the gap? Where was this piece that's missing? And what we, re what we determined the piece that was missing was mentoring. Women mentoring women, men mentoring women, women mentoring men, the whole entire component of, of, of being able to share uh, knowledge and ideas and, and excitement. Um, and what our circles do is we have a, a keynote speaker who brings like an idea and a topic or something that might be common to everybody. And then the group breaks into groups of like six to seven people with a couple of mentors to either unpack what that that subject might be or even unpack what the, you know, what's this past month had been and what's brought to you and how do we work together to solve it? And when we reached out to people to be mentors, uh, they were like, me? Like, what? why me? Like, I don't, I don't have anything to share. And that was really kind of a key part of it is that we all have something to share. So whether you come as a mentor, or you come as a mentee, it really is that whole bringing together of information and life experiences that enriches everybody. Oh, Cheryl, I, I took some notes. You know what I loved? I loved the tactical growth. Oh, I love that. I'm a strategist by heart, my friends. And so sometimes we do things and we don't necessarily have a plan attached to that mentorship or a plan attached to that growth or something like that bigger vision that we're trying to aim for. So that notion of getting tactical and making sure that women are there leading other women and younger girls to get to their dream, whatever that is, however big it is, super, super, super important. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so, so much for that. And the other thing, I know I'm supposed to really go, but the other thing that you said that I just want to reiterate um, is the fact that a lot of women and a lot of uh, young women don't see the leadership that they bring. Yeah. And so it's so important for us in community to recognize and have moments like this where we recognize that leadership um, and, and remind them of like how amazing and great and fabulous they are. So yeah. congratulations. Every little bit helps. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Congratulations, congratulations. Thank you. Thank and you. I'm giving you a virtual hug. I'm back at you. <laughs> Listen, this is like so cool. Okay, you stay safe. Enjoy. Who am I bringing up next? Who am I bringing up next? I think it's Carol. Is Carol next? Ah, Carol! Okay. <laughs> get a little bit overexcited in this old ceremony but listen <laughs> carol 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 how you doing i'm doing really well this is a great day this is a great day um okay, i want to see your mask that is looking my like some, that is a nice mask oh well my what this is my that is a <laughs> nice mask I'm sorry, everybody. Just take a pause to look at the beauty. That's all. That's all. Sometimes we do that. That is a beautiful mask. Thank you. It's my it's my cross between Afro Indigenous. <laughs> it is a beautiful, beautiful mask. Okay, hold on. Here we are, reading about Carol Pinnock. Um, Carol earned her first degree en français at the University of Waterloo and the Valley University in Quebec. So it was like a joint program, eh? Very cool. Um, Carol works as a French language teacher and guidance counselor at K at KCI. No, no, Kitchener Waterloo Collegiate. Yeah, KCI. KCI, right? Okay. Whew. Um, and she, you, I just need to stick a pin in this. I am so hyped, but I am reading everybody's bios on font that is this big. I don't know why I didn't increase the font when I printed out this document. And then Zara was like, "Why don't you reprint that?" And I was like. No, nah, man, I got this. I got this. I barely got this. Okay. <laughs> so hold on. Bear with me, my friends. And I'm also like doing this. Do you ever do that? I'm doing this where I have to like put it out so it looks bigger. Okay. Here we go. Um, 
Carol believes in the most student-friendly and caring <laughs> high school around. That is KCI, my friends. That is what she is saying. Carol took this initiative to launch the first multicultural club in her school. And what followed is also now the current African Heritage Club. Um, that was formed to support African Caribbean and Black identified students and educate the entire school population about people of African heritage throughout the diaspora. She is the mother of a bright and beautiful Monique Renee. Did you know that Monique is my middle name? What? When I read that, I was like, look at that. This is so cool. Um, in the community, Carol is a member of both the Inshala and Waterloo Region Mass Choir and has been a longtime volunteer with the Arts on the Wall Project at Martin Luther University College. Carol, 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 congratulations on being a recipient of the 2021 Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. I'm so super Thank hyped you. to have you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I am I am asking you the same question. I am asking you the same question in the work that you do. And it's interesting because you do a lot of things in community, which so many women do. Like they're they're in the arts and they're in education and they're in this and they're in that. You do a lot of things. So you pick whichever one you want to speak to, but in the work that you do, what does female leadership mean to you? Well, I'm going to talk about my school, really. And I want to tell you that, you know, the, the film, which many of us saw some years ago, Hidden Figures, mm -hmm. I love that expression because I think that I have been and continue to be a hidden figure and many women are hidden figures in the work that we do. Um, I'm a quiet leader, so I'm kind of like yeast. I kind of work gently throughout, things are going on. I don't really make a lot of noise, but I have some young women in my school and you know, teenage girls, high school girls, they are powerful. Some of them quietly work hard behind the scenes and others are just like kick down the door and say what they wanna say. So for me and my work, I think mentorship is important. And Cheryl mentioned that mentorship is important. So working with young women in my school and mentoring them um, starts just from the visibility that, that I'm here. They see that I'm here and I shamelessly go after any student I can. I call them. I say, Hey, Hey, we have this club. Do you want to join the club? You should. And I'm, you know, always pursuing them, but I really do that because I want them to see me and I want them to see themselves reflected in me. Our club is open to all students, but really, um, I do have a strong heart for, um, students of African heritage. And so um, what I'm interested in with the young women and the work that I do is wellness. I think wellness is, has been something that we've, we've dealt with in the school board, but the wellness of black youth, young black women and young black men is so important. And for me, wellness has to do with not just feeling good about your presence in the school, feeling like you're a part of something, but also your economics. And so I put a lot of emphasis into education. As far as I'm concerned, we educate to elevate. And wellness among women is connected to our economics. So as a guidance counselor now, a new guidance counselor, and I, I, I believe, um, I, and I could be corrected, I might be the only and first black a uh, female guidance counselor in the Water Region District School Board. So that is a huge piece for me. And so I'm working with young women, white women, black women, brown women, Asian women, any young woman to say, you know what? You can do what you want. You are smart, smart, smart people, go for it. So in the work as a guidance counselor, I see myself mentoring the young women and I see myself encouraging them to choose careers and to choose paths that will remove the possibility of economic distress and, and therefore ill health. Oh, Carol, I love it. I love everything. I took all the notes and then I got a note from, from Zara saying, stop writing all the notes, your camera's shaking. That's why <laughs> Zara thought that I wasn't going to say that live in a live stream, but I'm not afraid. I, I didn't even realize. So I'm sorry for anybody that was watching that while it was shaking. I had I had things to write. Um, Carol, 
thank you so much for everything that you're doing in the school. Um, thank you so much for everything that you are doing in the community, because when you use that sphere of influence to speak about that connection between our physical, our mental health, and our economic well-being, and the need for us to be okay with fighting for our economic well-being, it brings me right back to where we started. There's this RBC report that came out and said that women are disproportionately impacted by the pandemic, pushed out of the um, workforce at the moment during the pandemic. Um, and among them, working uh, families, like so single moms, for instance, um, disproportionately impacted yet again. And so I would argue that leading up to the pandemic, we were already struggling, mm -hmm. right? And then if you add that layer of race or ability or um, indigeneity or, um, you know, if you're a member of the LGBTQ2S community, then you end up with being even more disadvantaged and now this pandemic hit. And so the work that these women are doing in community um, is so critical and being able to start when they're young in that, that space of the guidance counselor, the one that helps them to dream big and, and then get that strategy to get there. Oh, oh my goodness. I cannot, I cannot even imagine how amazing our community is going to be with all of the work that you are doing with all of these young people coming up and their powerhouse sales is going to be wonderful. So yes. congrats. Congrats, Carol. Um, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for joining me. Virtual hug for you too. And to you too. Thanks, Laura May. This is excellent work that you're doing. Really appreciate it. Aww. And um, can I just add yeah. Cheryl May, Laura May, and Carol May? No. What? <laughs> that's oh my gosh. For anybody who has ever read a fairy tale anywhere, you know that that's magical. That's a magical thing. It's like we just had a unicorn come and visit us. Three Mays? What? Thank oh you. Gosh. Okay, now everybody else who's left is like, I'm going to find a May in my family. And I'm going to, <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Okay, next person, next person. We're nearly done, my friends. We have three more. Um, we are asking Bethelyn. Bethelyn. Hi. Yay! Hello, Bethelyn. How are you doing? I am doing pretty good. I'm coming to you from my school. I was given permission to use an empty room. Oh, you know what? You are fantastic. Big shout out because rumor has it that your school is watching this live stream. Is one of the classes watching? Um, yeah, my history class is literally watching it three doors down from where I am right now. Three doors. See? Another magical three. So to the history class at Bethlehem School, MPP Lindo says, go, go, go. I'm very, very pleased to have you here. Thank you for watching and for supporting each other in this amazing day where Bethlehem is the recipient of the 2021 Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. What? I'm so super hyped. Okay, I'm going to read about Bethlehem though. Hold on, folks. So Bethlehem is a WRDSB student who was nominated by their teacher, Christina Harnett which is wonderful. Thank you, Christina, for sending this in. Uh, Bethlen's teacher wrote in her nomination that Bethlen, a grade 10 student, has shown great leadership in the junior leadership course, as well as through her involvement um, in the student-led Inciting Change for Indigenous People group. Bethlen is also a valued member of the ACB student group. And most importantly, Bethlen is someone who makes a positive impact on those around her from sharing her smiles behind her mask and her bubbly personality, but also by advocating and amplifying the voices around her. Bethlen, congratulations. Congratulations on being a recipient of the 2021 Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. Can I just say, um, when I was in grade 10, I was not doing any of the leadership that you're doing. So thank you for being a very solid mentor for my children, who will now see that young people at that age can, in fact, do all sorts of amazing, super cool things, just like you. Thank you for all that you're doing. I'm going to ask you the exact same question that I have asked everybody else. So here it is. In the work that you do in your role, and it doesn't matter which part of it you want to focus on, what does female leadership mean to you? Well, starting off, not only am I a girl, I'm also a Black student. And as you mentioned previously, in workforces, uh, women were more likely to be laid off or kicked out of their jobs. In the community, we don't have as much representation, and even in schools. And so I think 
seeing women through leadership as us gaining our power back um, that we lost throughout the last few centuries and diminishing the stereotypes that we are given. Uh, getting back out into the workforces and as Miss Pinnock um, mentioned previously, hidden figures, which it's amazing black representation, women representation, working for NASA. It's not, you don't get that every day. And through the clubs and groups that I'm a part of, um, like ACBI and ICFIP, which I started last year, I think if we keep raising awareness for all that we do, keep doing the hard work that we've been like continuously been working on over the past year and a half, and just keep doing what we're doing as everybody, as students, as women, um, I think we can really rise far above and take over the world. Bethlyn, you made me cry. Honestly, like young women in our community are going to literally save all of us from all of the things that we as adults just sort of do willy nilly and don't really think about the impact. Um, like, thank you for your wisdom and for your words and for your courage, because it takes great courage to start a group like that at your school. Um, you started that last year, you said? Um, I did with my best friend. In grade nine? In grade uh, yeah. nine. Yeah. In grade nine. Okay. So to all of those out there, you are now speaking to the future MPP for Kitchener Center, Bethelyn. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Bethelyn! All righty. I'll take it. <laughs> all righty. I just need to, one more shout out before I let you go, Bethelyn. Um, there are so many wonderful comments about you going up in this chat right now. So oh, you are on fire. That girl is That's on fire. great. Yeah. Just another shout out to my history class. <laughs> They'll love that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bethelyn. Congratulations. I'm giving you a virtual hug as well. Another shout out to the students at your school, to the amazing teachers, because the teachers have to be pretty darn amazing to have the students feel that they can do this kind of work. So thank yeah. you to all of you. And um, oh, oh my gosh, be safe, do your thing, keep rocking it. Yeah. This is amazing. Okay, we're nearly done, my friends, I swear. Rochelle, Rochelle, join me upon the virtual stage. Brown Rochelle, Brown Rochelle. Oh my gosh, abort mission, abort mission. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Rochelle, how are you? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am so, so pleased to have you. I don't know if anybody is, has been like watching this from the beginning. Somehow, my, it's like all of our colors are coordinated. So yes, look really pretty when they're up on stage. Hello, red walls. I like that. All I the, like the plants. And Everything yeah. is all perfect. Okay, listen, Rochelle, before I get ahead of myself, I'm going to read about the likes of you. Um, Rochelle is one of our 2021 recipients of the Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. Um, Rochelle moved to Canada in 2012 as an international student. She has been part of the Compass Refugee Support Center as a volunteer for several years, advocating for the rights of refugees and helping to make their transition into Canada smooth. Recently, she was part of a fantastic team and a project that carefully developed an organizational anti-racism, anti-oppression policy document, as well as an action as as well as action steps for an equality program team at Compass. Additionally, at the start of June 2021, she joined Apply Board as a customer support specialist where she helps students all over the world apply to universities abroad and has been a part of the Women's Network where she helps organize events to empower women across the company. She has a plan to continue to strengthen her sense of community through work and play and is looking forward to the non-COVID times. Oh, I am so looking forward to the non-COVID times. I'm going to go yes. find each one of these winners and give them a real hug in like real life. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Rochelle, 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 I just want to say thank you and congratulations. And I swear I'm going to ask you um, a question, the same question that I've asked everybody. It's so fascinating to listen to everybody's responses because you're hearing how important it is to have women leaders in all the different areas in our community. That is what builds so much amazing things. So my question sure. to you, my question to you 
in the work that you do, why is female leadership so darn important? Well, the female perspective is so important in the work I do because it brings important values of collaboration and empathy, especially when you're dealing with students and people claiming refugee status. Um, women bring an empathetic, fresh perspective to my work that shifts the focus from competition to a sense of sweet, sweet unity and empowerment of that unity um, in unity women are just unstoppable. Um, on a personal level, I have been so lucky to have the powerful influence of so many phenomenal women in my life. Um, shout out to my mama, who's an absolute boss. Um, and I would like to just thank every one of them um, because they truly draw. I don't know if I got cut off there. I mean oh. Oh, sorry. I was talking while muted, which means that it's a real <laughs> virtual session because it has to happen at least once. It kind of froze. So you froze right after you said shout out to your mama, which I think is your mommy's energy <laughs> saying, no, I want everyone to sit out and actually give me a shout out right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would just like to thank every one of those women who have had such a massive influence on my life because they truly drive the work and volunteering that I do. Um, and I'd also like to say what a privilege to be recognized alongside such influential women today. I feel truly honored and inspired to do more. I'm so excited to continue to be part of this community and do more for the community. Oh, Rochelle. Thank you so, so much for everything that you do. I used to, at one point, I held the Citizenship and Immigration Critic Portfolio and the fight for healthy settlement, um, making sure that newcomers have what they need to grow and thrive and that they understand the community, that they're introduced to um, the realities of Indigenous history right here um, yeah. is so, so important. And the work that you're it's doing really is doing just that. So mwah, I'm giving you a virtual hug. I swear the real the real award is in the mail. Um, <laughs> thank you so and much. thank you. Keep on keeping on. And bye, Michelle's mama or Rochelle's mama. I think <laughs> that you've done an amazing job because look at this. Yay! <laughs> okay, my friends. And here we are. I have the pleasure, the honor, the privilege of asking Donna to please, please, pretty please with sugar on it, join me on the virtual stage. Donna! Hello, Donna. I'm going to ask you to unmute for unmute yourself just a sec. Hello, Donna. How great are day. You? I'm great awesome. Day. Thank you. Listen, okay. So for everyone else, I kind of wrote stuff or they sent in stuff and I read stuff, but I just want to take a second to let the world know why I think Donna is such a deserving recipient. It's going to make me cry. I haven't even said any words deserving recipient of the 2021 Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. Um, when I first was uh, running, I wasn't even elected yet, I had received a document um, that outlined the needs of Indigenous community members in Waterloo Region. It had data, it had information, it had a history that um, I don't think elected representatives or potentially elected representatives um, understood or maybe uh, had engaged with in any real way. Um, when I was elected, I had the honor of being able to sit with Donna and talk not just about that report, about the kinds of things that were needed to help healing of the seven generations um, and the consequent, the communities, the Indigenous community members that were in, um, not just in my riding, but in the region. And at the end of the day, when you're helping people on that grand scale, you are helping Indigenous community members further than just the reach that you have in the region, right? Because other people are like, oh, we can do this better. We could do this work. In the midst of all of this advocacy, um, I realized that without Donna in our community, consistently fighting, consistently making sure that people knew what was needed and consistently reminding the people in positions of power that they would still get phone calls no matter what happens, that they would still you know, have somebody's gonna call your phone, knock on the door, remind you of what is needed and hold you accountable to the kind of work that you should be doing in community because it is a privilege to be elected in these roles. 
Um, I don't think that we would have the kinds of leaders in community without community members like Donna pushing us to do better. I don't think we will ever get to a place of reconciliation, I use in air quotes, um, because I was talking to um, my very good friend, Laurie Campbell, who said to me, it's, it's making things right. It's a rewriting of history. It's a rethinking of what we have done and how we can do it better. Um, we can't get there unless we listen to and support folks like Donna. Now jump ahead to uh, September 30th, when Healing of the Seven Generations um, had to shoulder the, the realities of this history that they have been fighting to be recognized on their shoulders with, with finding more and more children across Turtle Island being recognized for a blip in history and all of these people come and they're having to hold the grief and the pain and then be expected to educate the likes of us in the midst of all of that. Um, and Donna, you do your work with such grace and dignity and consistency and love. And so I am, I cannot even tell you how honored I am. Oh my God. See? MPP Linda was crying, it's what she does, but I am so truly honored and blessed to be in a position where I am in this role as a member of provincial parliament and I can honor you with an award that historically doesn't come to folks like us. So you are a recipient of the 2021 Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. I am so super blessed um, I love you so dearly and so appreciate what you do in community. And I'm asking you the same question in the work that you do. Why, why, why is female leadership so, so important? Well, I'd like to say thank you so much for those beautiful, loving words. I think um, we we can't forget as women in our communities who are given that title of leaders, that staying humble and being respectful are the very heart of what it is that we need to do for our communities. Encouraging with love, you know, um, making sure that uh, those young girls and young women um, know that their voice is value. They, they have value when they speak. For a long time, our community, the women in our community were not valued. And there was many things that were taken away that um, harmed our community. And now we have an opportunity to stand up and say, um, we're not going to allow this to happen anymore. Um, our children need to be healed. And it's... it's um, hard work, but it's easy after it's done that we pave the road for our young children to come up behind us and continue where we've left off um, moving forward and bring that healing um, within our community and the community all the way around them. And I think that's most important is being respectful to the people around us, our neighbors, our community members, the other leaders in the community, um, allowing them to understand that we hear them as well. And wh what they share with us is also valuable. I think that um, um, knowing that it's a privilege to be our best selves and, and shine in the community and honor that, honor that we have now an opportunity to be our best selves. And what does that look like? Um, never doubt that. Um, being your best selves is learning how to put love in there. Love for yourself, love for your family, love for your community. And when we can truly walk in this way and promote that, promote that love, then we have 
the most awesome community um, that we can moving forward. And I think that's very um, important for all of us to remember um, to stay honest. And, um, you know, let's all give each other a hug when we can and not forget that, uh, you know, regardless of the hard work that we've done and the endless hours in the day that there's always a beautiful day tomorrow and let's go for that. Right. Donna. Yes. My answer is yes. Let's do all of it. everybody do what Donna says. It's kind of like Simon says, um, <laughs> <laughs> Donna, I am so truly blessed to be able to, um, to give you this award. Honestly, um, we see your leadership. We see you. I, I don't even know how you do it. Um, I don't know how you hold everything, but please know in all sincerity, if there is ever anything that you need and I can help, I am there. Thank Phone you. call away, send me a text, find me online. Apparently that's where I, I raise all sorts of rabble rousing in the online space. <laughs> I, I know that's true. <laughs> Big hugs to you. Lots of love. Thank you. Oh, my friends, my friends. Okay, we have come to the end of this amazing, amazing award ceremony. I'm going to ask the wonderful, brilliant Alicia to join me back up on the stage. Alicia. So um, for anybody who knows how I roll, I like surprises. Um, and my birthday is May 6th, and I really do like surprises. And so um, I just wanted to say a big, huge shout out to Alicia for everything that she does in community. Um, many people know her as a Juno nominated artist in community, et cetera. But I don't think they realize how loving and caring and compassionate Alicia is and how much work she does. When I first met Alicia, I was actually, again, I was at Laurier and we were um, struggling because Black Lives Matter um, in Toronto had set up their shop in front of a police station and community members, Black students, here were struggling with everything that was happening and what they were seeing on the news, et cetera. And we created a healing circle. And I walked into this um, drumming circle and there was like Alicia just chillaxing and trying to bring more love and care into the universe. And as far as I'm concerned, if you bring love and care and compassion into the universe, then you too are deserving of a 2021 Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. And so Alicia, surprise! You are also a recipient of the 2021 Leading Women, Leading Girls Award. Yay! Wow, now you're going to make me cry, Laura May. Ah! I am so super, I just, I love it. You just, you bring so much joy and love and care. And so um, I know that you're supposed to sing one more song for us to sort of close it out. But I would love to ask you before you sing to tell us why um, female leadership is so very, very, very important. And then you can go off into your song. Wow. Thank you so much. This is a huge surprise. I was not expecting that. And I feel like I am in amazing company after having heard everyone speak today. So I'm, I'm thrilled. And I, I just want to sit and cry with you, Laura. Maybe we'll have to do that another day for sure. It's due. Um, and so female leadership to me, a large part of my whole musical ethos has to do with finding balance, um, especially when it comes to gender and other aspects of our identity in music and art, um, the ways that art and media influence the entire world. I, I don't take it lightly. And so um, I've seen the way that female leadership impacts the quality of music that, that we hear uh, from local artists, uh, from you know your big star artists on the radio. And like everyone said, mentorship has been the absolute, I think, greatest strength and avenue, kind of speaking to what you said, Laura May, about strategy, to that space. So I, I love being able to um, help younger artists, even artists my age, even artists older. And it's, it's not a hierarchical, it's very much community sharing. And so female leadership to me is everything. <laughs> Truly, I really believe it's going to change the world. And so I'm so proud of everyone here today. And I am very honored, like I said, to uh, receive that incredible accolade. Thank you, Laura. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you to all of the win winners. I'm going to ask um, Alicia to grace us with another beautiful, beautiful, wonderful song. Um, and yeah, take it away. Okay. Thank you, Lerme. I'm going to play a song uh, called Changing the World because I think that's what everyone here today is doing in a huge way. And, uh, and I hope you enjoy. Every cell in my body is replacing itself with another and the new ones have room to change, to grow. And even the genetic encoding is able to slightly vary itself for future generations to come. Every breath that I'm taking, every word that I say, every piece of my heart that I give away. Every breath that I'm taking, every word that I say, every piece of my heart that I give away. Oh, well, it's changing the world, changing the world, changing the world inside of me. Oh, 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 changing the world, changing the world, changing the world inside of me. time that my heart beats electromagnetic waves emanate from my chest like a drum beat out to the world playing rhythmization to the first human and even the genetic encoding hey i can trace myself to a single common cell to which i credit myself i am reflected in the stars nebulous soft spun by an infinite power every breath that i'm taking and every word that i say every piece of my heart that i give away oh every breath that we're taking and every word that we say every piece of our hearts that we give away i know it's changing the world changing the world Changing the world inside of me. Oh, 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 changing the world, changing the world. It's changing the world inside of me. Oh, shout out to Laura Maven, yo, and shout out to everybody here. I'm so inspired by getting to know each and every one of you and shout out to people watching afterwards. Just know that these are the leaders of our community. Oh, and we're rising in unity. Oh, yeah. I love you, Laura May. Hey, yeah. I love you, Laura May. Hey, yeah. I love you, Laura May. Hey. <laughs> Oh, if you love Lauren Ray, put some hearts in the chat box. That is the version of singing along right now. Hey, 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 we love you, Lauren Ray. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Oh, Alicia! Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, for blessing us with this beautiful music. Thank you to all of the winners. I'm going to try and share my screen, which pray for me. Hold on. Add to stream. Oh my gosh, I did it. I did it. I did it with me there. Look at me, Zara. Oh, <laughs> I pressed a button. Um, so 
This is the, the list of all of our 2021 recipients. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything. Folks, stay safe. Know that these are the leaders in your community. These are the people in my hood. I can't even believe it. I'm like overwhelmed with joy, sending so much love into the universe. Go on with your bad selves. And as my parents say, walk good. Mm.